We are continuing our message this month on the mighty hand of God. That's been the entire theme, and we've watched God do extraordinary things. He is that, that great God. But today, I want to zone in on one particular attribute of God, and I title today's message, Flex Your Muscles, God. You know, when, when God flexes his muscles, things change. I'm, I'm going to flex my muscle right now. Get ready for this. Didn't see much, did you? Nah, uh, I don't have that much anymore. But, but when God flexes his muscles, something significant happens. There's a shift, a transfer in the atmosphere. Uh, whether it be spiritual or financial or relational, God flexes and things change. And we're going to ask him to flex his muscles for you over your enemies, over things that are against you, over things that are just idle and are in a negative decline. Let God flex his muscles and do something special, something extraordinary for us. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, and we'll pick it up in verse 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? There's nothing that can overwhelm us because the presence of God is with you. He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything. Not a few things, but everything. God has given us freely eternal life. Certainly he'll provide everything else that you need when you ask him and when you pray for him, pray to him. Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. There is an adversary that, that, that lies and manipulates and deceives and he's very good at the trickery, the deception. And he will speak things into the atmosphere to try to bring doubt and fear and lies and manipulation against you. But he, is, he can't overcome you. He can't prevail against you because it is God himself who justifies us. God who, himself who has made us honorable and faithful and, and righteous and loyal and committed. And even though sometimes there's a moment in time that you might, you might drift from that just for a second and you're not as faithful or not as honorable honorable and not as righteous as you should be. But God's blood, the, the blood of Yeshua, the, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, cleanses us and makes us right with God. If we'll confess it and turn our hearts back towards the things of God, God will always turn his heart towards us. He did not spare his own son, but offered Jesus willingly. Who can bring an accusation against God as elected as God who justifies who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more, he has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. It seems to me like it's, it's stacked in our favor that God sent Jesus to die, and then Jesus rises from the dead and sits at God's right hand as an ever reminder of how faithful we are and how righteous we are and how good we are because we are in him. We are have access into the heavens through Jesus Christ. And so when God sees Jesus, he's seeing us. And when he's seeing us, he's seeing Jesus. And he honors us and blesses us and strengthens us because of the faithfulness that Jesus has, <clears throat> excuse me, that he has demonstrated. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction? You answer. Can affliction separate you from the love of Jesus? Can distress or persecution or famine, can famine separate you from the love of Christ? A, a challenge, a, a difficulty, a situation? Of course not. Or, or danger or sword or peril, some type of um, enemy that comes against us? The scripture says, as it is written... Because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. There, there are some, some challenges. We, we, we won't live in these earth suits forever. Nonetheless, God is faithful in all his ways towards us. And he hears your prayers as you pray. And he, re, he responds to the prayers that you bring before him. And it is a, a sweet offering, as an incense, the scripture says, that comes before God, our prayers, as we intercede for each other and for our families and for our communities. 
And God hears us and responds to us. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. You're strong and powerful. It would be one thing for us just to be conquerors, but we're more than conquerors. We overcome in every situation, unstoppable, powerful. Flex your muscles. You're unstoppable with God. God flexes for you and causes you to overcome. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, wow, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can stop us. I want to encourage you to structure your life habits as though they are congruent to your faith in God. Structure your life habits. Structure some of the things that you're doing, the way that you get up, the way that, that you pray, the way that is it the first thing you get your Bible and begin to read or, or put music in the house that's a, that's a, a reflection of, of your confidence and your faith and your trust with God. So in your house is, is a worship experience and a, and a joy that comes. Are you speaking life to those around you, your sons, your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, your, your dog Sparky, your cat Fluffy. I mean, all the things that are important to you, that you're, you're speaking to those things, the life of God. And, and if you'll structure your life habits so that your life is congruent to your faith in God, that you say, I trust you, God, and I'm walking with you, and that things are going to be okay. And then you go out and you live that way by demonstrating love and kindness and, and goodness and, and righteousness to other people. You're going to find that, you're, that, the, uh, that power that, that God has released inside of you to overcome, to make you unstoppable, that, that when challenges come, they, they bounce off of you. And it doesn't mean that you don't have them. It just means they don't stop you. They don't overcome you. Uh, and that you have faith in God, and fear is pushed to the side. Come on, you're unstoppable, and, and believe that and trust that because God has ordained it to be like this. Um, even though we go through some moments of struggle, God will flex his muscles. He will cause you to overcome, and you shall become unstoppable until you get to a place where it becomes routine. You get used to it. You get used to winning. You're used to overcoming, you're used to prevailing. And then your life becomes um, uh, an example to the community within the community. And people see you and get to know you, and, and they want to know your God because they see God alive in you. And it's attractive because that's the way God is. So start to build um, little, little habits, little things that you can do that, that build faith inside your heart and and faith in God inside your, your life habit. And so um, if you've got you to change some television habits, change them. If you've got to delete some programs or some shows, delete them. Um, if you've got to change some of the way you do music, then, then change it. And do the things that are, that are consistently helping you go deeper into the things of God. Because God wants you to overcome. And he has designed it for you to prevail. He is the great God. And his mighty hand is on our lives. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. And I, I want to give you another uh, bit of action or activity that I think is important for you, you to have in your life. Um, in Luke 6, 12, it says, During those days he went out, he being Jesus, he went out to the mountain to pray and spent all night in prayer to God. Now, Jesus is a prayer warrior. He always prays. He's always interceding and praying and standing before God because he's getting the heart of God so that he can perform the desire of God in the day. So this particular night was a unique and special night because he is setting some things in motion that's going to change the world forever. And I'm just going to encourage you that there's a, there's a time we're in right now that if you will set yourself aside to pray and to fast and to spend that time with God, you are setting some things in motion that will change your household and your family and your friends and your neighborhood and certainly this community and, and our nation forever. 
You say, well, who am I? Well, you are God's anointed. You are unstoppable. You're the ones that God has marked by his blood and, and, and has given you the ability to overcome and intercedes for you at God's right hand. And when God sees Jesus, he's reminded of the sacrifice that was made for you. Come on. So Jesus is going to pray, and, and he goes to this mountain, and he prays all night. And in the morning, when daylight comes, he summons his disciples, and he chose 12 of them whom he named apostles. So there's lots of disciples. There's lots of, of men and, and women who have committed themselves to Jesus Christ and walked with Jesus. And Jesus is doing incredible things in all the cities. He is healing and, and setting people free and driving out devils and opening blind eyes and the lame walk and the deaf hear. And it's unbelievable. And many disciples are connecting to Jesus. And Peter, James, and John, and all the other disciples are connected too. It's, it's like a church and it's big and, and, and lots of people in it. And then, and then God begins to single individuals out and, and mark certain things and, and times and seasons. I remember I can go back now 10, 11, almost 12 years now that I'm riding in the car, driving, and the Lord says, I am preparing the earth, preparing for a mighty move, a move that hasn't happened before, and, and, and you, Gordon, are part of this move, and, and I have other men and women, some you know and some you don't know, that I'm positioning right now, and a great thing is happening. And I'm just telling you, that's, that was over 10 years ago. We are in a place right now where God is marking us and marking you to do something extraordinary because he is the great God. And so he knew what he was going to do. So he, he chose out of these many disciples 12 to be apostles because they had the responsibility of carrying the mission forward as God has given us the privilege of caring for the mission he's given to us. He went out into the mountain to pray, and he prayed all night. When daylight came, in verse 13, he summoned his disciples, and he chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles, an apostolic anointing to establish great things and to do mighty works. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, uh, Simon, who is Peter, James and John, the, the brothers of sons of Zebedee, and Andrew are in Jesus' inner circle. Peter, James, and John, the primary three, and Andrew the fourth. And whenever Jesus does some significant things, um, you're going to find these guys there. They're not far from Jesus doing extraordinary things. And I've said this to you before, and I'm going to say it to you again. I think it's important that you listen to what I'm saying and to do it. You have to build a significant inner circle around your life, a Peter, James, and John. And I don't, I don't care if they're family members or they're just friends, but you need to have somebody in the faith who trusts God that you can lean on. You shouldn't have an inner circle that's built with people that don't believe what you believe or go where you go or do the things you do. You should build an inner circle around people you can lean on, that, can, that, that you trust and that trust you. And you build this, this, this reciprocal relationship in Christ Jesus where you're strong and mighty. So when, you're, when they're weak, you're strong. And, and, and when... You're weak, they're strong. And then together, you're able to do certain things that you can't do by yourself. Often you'll find that these, these men, they connected to each other and encouraged each other and built each other up. So Simon, and, and, and who's Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Now, Jesus prays all night over these many disciples, and God highlights for him 12, and in those 12, there's one, Judas Iscariot, who becomes a traitor. Now, Jesus didn't call Judas to become a betrayer. A betrayer. He called Jesus, I mean Judas, 
to become an apostle. And as he becomes an apostle, he makes a decision somewhere down the road. In the three and a half years that Jesus is with them, he makes a decision towards the end that, that causes him to become this betrayer. There's, a, there's some greed in, in Judas. There's some selfish ambition in Judas. There's some desires that are inordinate in Judas. You say, well, Jesus chose him. Yeah, he did. Certainly he chose him. Uh, but he didn't empower him to be a betrayer. He was empowering him to be a, an apostle. And he gave him an anointing as an apostle. So much so that throughout the years of the ministry where the, these guys are going and healing the sick and driving out devils and doing the things that Jesus called them to do and they sent them out two by two, somebody went out with Judas because he was one of the 12. And they didn't come back and say, all of us do miraculous things, but not Judas. Judas never does anything significant, right? There's something wrong with him. None of them had that inclination. In fact, when Jesus is having dinner with them, and he says, one of you shall betray me, not one of them said, yes, Judas. All of them said, none of us. Are you kidding me? Because they all had this level of devotion, but something was inside of Judas that allowed him to betray Jesus because he had a moment of, of deception, a moment of trickery from the demonic. I, I, any of us could have a moment, and I'm just encouraging you to build your inner circle so that when you do have a moment, your circle grabs you and helps you come back to yourself and the community within the community grabs you and holds you accountable. Come on. God is with us. He's for us. And because of that, the enemy can mark you and try to come against you. You know, when you look at the story of Judas that you know and, and he betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and and, and when he realizes what has happened, he's, he's a little bit blinded by it. He can't see it. You, right now when we're reading it, we can clearly see. We can say, why would he do that? But, but he's living it. So it's, it's happening real time for him. And, and, and he receives this, these 30 pieces of silver. And then once he realizes it, he doesn't leave or escape or go someplace else or even hold, keep the money. He takes the money back and throws it on the ground. He wouldn't have anything to do with it. And he realizes he's made this unique, mis unbelievable mistake. And now the enemy comes who has him. And he whispers lies and manipulation and trickery and deception into Judas. And Judas hangs himself. Well, why didn't he repent? He could have repented. He could have come back to the Lord and said, I'm sorry I've made a mistake. I don't want to keep this money. I'm sorry, Jesus. He could have done that. You know how open, how graceful God is, the mercy of God. I'm just saying for any of us, if we'll stay connected to Jesus, if we'll walk with him and talk with him and do the things that we need to do and build the, our circle of, 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 of friends and, and, and confidants around us, then we'll, we'll overcome, we'll prevail, we'll make mistakes, but mistakes won't destroy us because God is with us as he's with you. Judas became this, tra this traitor and, and he hung himself. Jesus comes down with them and he stood at a level place with a large crowd of his disciples and a great number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. They're coming from everywhere. I'm telling you, movement is afoot. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those tormented by unclean spirits were made well. The whole crowd was trying to touch him because power was coming out from him and healing them all. That's, that's the way of Jesus. Um, I'm just going to encourage you that if you'll, if, if you'll walk with him and do the things God has called you to do and pray and fast and give and serve and honor, there's, there's a great power in us that the Spirit of God has established in us and through us and for us, for our own metrons, our own, our own local communities, our homes and our neighborhoods and also the communities at large. And so some of the, the crisis that, that is 
flipping the world upside down is, is not really designed to flip you, but you're designed to flip it. That it comes against you one way, that trouble or trial, and, but flees before you seven ways because we overcome. And, but you have to believe that and declare that and walk like that and speak good things into your house and into your, into your heart, into your own mind, into, into the atmosphere in which God has given you a measure of rule. Jesus heals them all. Not a few, heals them all. He prays for them, which takes time, and he heals them all. He is the great God. I want to I encourage you to build your partnerships. Partners are important. Um, you have to have some give and take in a partnership. You can't have everything your way. Uh, that does, that's not a partnership. That's a little called a dictatorship. Now, we have sometimes dictatorships when, when you think when you know better than somebody else. But that, that, that is only when a parent who is old has a two-year-old. And you're saying to your two-year-old, Go to, it's time for bed. No! No, I want to go to bed. And they're, ter- they're terrific twos, and they're just in a bad moment. But that'll pass. But when somebody gets older and they're mature and developed, there's a give and there's a take. You ought to have that in your relationship with, with your children, especially your adult children or your, your, your spouse. There's a flow, a give and take. And in a co- uh, an environment of, of, of co-workers, there's a give and a take, an ebb and a flow. Find the, the right partners and build good things around your life, and you'll find an ebb and a flow and a, a level of relationship and intimacy that's built with each other. You ought to get some, some um, a paper and write down some of your partners and some of your inner circle. And out of that, you're going to find the ones that are close and the ones that have always been there for you and will fight for you and not fight with you. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says this, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up. But pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? I'm trying to ex- explain that to my wife. I'm showing her right here in the scriptures. And uh, she just keeps giving me blankets and says, warm, warm up. Thank God for the invention of a blanket. And if anyone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A three, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. You know, a cord of three is the third thing in the cord in the, is the Lord. Uh, not only are we strong through our bond with each other, our marriage, our covenant with each other, we're also stronger, unbreakable, unstoppable when Jesus is part of that cord. When we have joined our hearts to be connected to each other and to him. So that strength causes us to overcome. Build sustainable partnerships. A partnership with with the right people and a partnership with the right people and the living God. Those partnerships will cause uh, you to overcome and you'll build lifelong friendships, partnerships, good things that will happen in your life. And people will open doors for you because of their relationships that they have and you don't have to build that all yourself. Um, Build your partners and start connecting in that way. And let, let me close with a passage in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. We're going to ask God to flex his muscles, to be strong with us. But we're, but we're going to build some partnerships and, and endure some hardships, some struggle, struggles because God is with us and live a life that's congruent uh, to our faith in God. Peter talks to us about devotion. Devotion to God is required. If, if you're going to walk with God, be devoted to God. And you'll watch God do extraordinary things for you and through you. God honors those who are devoted to him. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, But as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy, here's what the Lord says, because I am holy. Be holy, be devoted 
set apart, distinct to God all by yourself. That's what God is. He's holy. Set apart, distinct, unique. So you ought to be submitted to God's desire, whatever you choose for me, whatever you want to do. I am devoted to you, set apart, distinct, holy, a vessel you can use to do what you choose to do to make a difference in the lives of other people. Uh, you can't come to the throne all the time and it be always about you. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. At some point in time, you have to say, instead of give me, use me. Use me, God. How, how can I help you? What can, what can I do to make a difference in somebody else's life? How can I demonstrate the love of God that's in you that you've shown to me? And help me with my partners. Let my partners be strong. And, and I'm praying for other people. You can't pray for other churches and pray for other ministries and other things to do well. And help them whenever you can. You'll become a huge difference maker. And God can trust you and elevate your life. If you appeal to the Father who judges, who judges impartially according to each one's work, you are to conduct yourselves in reverence during your time living as strangers. Listen, we're only on, on this earth for a little bit of time, 100 years, maybe a little less, a little bit more. Uh, and then we'll exit the earth suit and, and receive a glorified body that will never die and we will, we will live forever. We'll, God has marked us to do extraordinary things now, but this is just a moment, a moment in time, more of a testing ground than anything else. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of a little test. You're going to pass this test and overcome. So be faithful to God. Do what God's asked you to do. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life inherited from your fathers. You were redeemed not with perishable things like silver or gold, God didn't give you eternal life because you bought it or you earned it or you gave enough money to get it. There's nothing you can possibly give to exchange for eternal life, the life that God has given to you because he loves you, because Jesus loves you and God is willing to do anything for you. We're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ like that of an unblemished, and spotless lamb, perfect. Jesus comes and gives his life for us. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for you. This is, wasn't a spur of the moment decision that God made to send Jesus to, to die on our, in our place so that he could save us. It was established before time began, before the world was founded. God is working his plan, and you are an important part of it. So you ought to reach out to others and, and introduce Jesus to them so they can be set free and healed and, del and delivered. Therefore, him, you believe in God, through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified yourselves by your obedience to the truth. That's, that's a, when, you, when you set yourself apart to do it God's way, God sees a cleansing and a purification process happening inside your life. And you get more and more like the reflection of the living God in the earth. So that you can show through your activity to others the grace and mercy of the living God so that you show sincere brotherly love for each other. From a pure heart, love one another constantly. Let us continually demonstrate this love of God because that love of God is the, is the love that saved us. Because you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living an enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and its glory like a flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fails, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this word is the gospel that was proclaimed to you. So we don't live as those who are not born again. We're born again. We are devoted to God. 
and God is devoted to us. Live limitless without fear. Love constantly and give and serve and be the difference maker that God has called you to be. And you will find that God's favor and God's strength and God's honor and God's blessing will sit in your house and be in your life and and it will last forever. And when you come before him to ask him to respond to you, he will respond and he will give you great grace and favor. And that favor is transferable to other people in your household and in your family. And you will experience great joy, the joy that comes from walking with Yeshua. He is King of kings. He's Lord of lords. And he loves us and he loves you. And he will always respond to your prayers because you look like Jesus and Jesus represents you. Father, I just thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, for your kindness, your goodness to us. Help us to reciprocate that by being holy and faithful to you, to realize that we are unstoppable and that we have good partners in the kingdom of God that will help us in times of trouble. Let the community within the community be a source of strength and and favor, Father, so that we can give to make a difference in those who can't make a difference in in their life without us. Help us to connect in ways we've never connected before. I bless you in the name of Yeshua that God's blessing would sit in upon your life and you would grow and, and become stronger than ever before. And the devotion that you have with God would, would come before the throne and give you great honor. And so that when you need God to move, he moves. And when you need God to be God, he's God. And when you need him to step into your atmosphere and do some extraordinary in your house and in your body or in your family, God does that. He hears your prayers and he responds because we are connected to him and we are for him. I want to, I wanna, just as we close to receive our offering today, I want to take a moment, though, and show you some of the things that are happening uh, around the community right now that we are doing on your behalf, the resources, the ties, the offering, steps of faith that you're giving they make a huge difference in so many lives. Not, not only globally, we do a lot of things globally, and, and we should continue to do that, but we also do a lots of wonderful things here locally, right in our community. Sometimes just spur of the moment, there's people with needs and, and struggles or challenges, and they need, they need food or, or, or materials that they don't have, they can't get at the store, or they can't, just can't afford it. Or they're older and they can't get out, and somebody needs to come by and respond to them. Let me just show you, uh, before we receive our offering, some of the things that we've been able to do in the community to make a difference. You see there are... Uh, uh, just some a family that needed some help, and and so w- we sent a team to the grocery store and bought these groceries, and then um, left it for them. They so we had you may have gotten an email or sent um, or something we sent out on I think it was face the Facebook Live, one of the one of the social media posts, and that uh, told people in the community if you're in a, if you're in a difficult place and we can help you. Um, we'll do that. And so we, we t- put a budget together and, and just really started reaching out. There's a little boy, young man, grabbing some resources that, that we had provided, and he's taking those uh, to the home. So it's going to be a blessing to him and to certainly his family. There's uh, not only those in Puyallup and, and Kent, and, and there's a few other little cities that are represented here. There's, there's, uh, there's one more. Um, just we've been we've just been blessing people and, and doing some extraordinary things and all of that that we're physically doing are attributed to uh, your faithfulness through your not only through steps of faith but through tithes and offerings and so God's name is being glorified. I, I'm honored by the fact that a woman who's probably not a member here at OCC but um, once they came and reached out and and blessed her she she wrote a little note and said man we're what church is this? How can, I, how can I get connected, at least watch it online? I appreciate the faithfulness that you guys have, have shown towards my family, not even really knowing her. But, but we are family, and we do know you. And we're committed as God's people. And so God reaches out through us to be salt and light in the lives of, of multitudes. And he records it, and he remembers your faithfulness. And he's going to respond to that for you when you need him to. Father, we just thank you for all the 
tithes, offerings, steps of faith, global missions, everything that we're privileged to give. If you're giving through push pay and you haven't set that up yet, then you can text Overcomer to 77977. It's an easy process that allows you to do that. Um, if you can write a check, you can write a check and send that in. Or um, during the day, off and on, there are people here at the church. There's maybe somebody here when you come. Um, you can bring a check by. But, but, Father, we just thank you for all the faithful people that continue to do your will and your work, even in adverse times. This is the time where the widow's mites meant more to you than it did to her. And she released those to you to demonstrate her love and devotion to you. Father, we give and serve because we love you and are devoted to you. We ask that your blessing would be extraordinarily released in a double portion back to us in unique ways we don't even anticipate. And help us to do more than we've ever done according to your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us today. And, and invite somebody else to join us, join you online next time. A lot of, you can write some questions. Um, you can share uh, the video to somebody else. Send that to them. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. We'll have a great service on Wednesday night. And then we'll be here next Sunday as well. And then we're going into the Easter season. Hopefully most of this would be rectified by then, but if not, we will stay the course and continue to have wonderful services on Wednesday and then Good Friday and then the week Easter celebration that weekend. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care.